Tesla is going on everyone. Shiva Sapkata here with another Tesla accessory review. And today I'm beyond excited to show you the new sexy nub from Enhance. I've been waiting for this product for a really long time since they launched it last year, waiting patiently. And I'm gonna show you all the features, all the settings and everything and what this product really does because I have a lot of questions and I can't get those answered from those manufacturers, promo videos or the ad videos. And I have yet to come across any people actually reviewing this nub in YouTube where they go through all the settings and everything. So I'm gonna show you all of that here in the channel today. I got mine from T-Sport Line, which is the US-based reseller of this product. And they are based in Georgia with a US phone number that you can pick up and call and resolve any issues if you have. And if you wanna use a discount code Shiva Tesla during checkout, you should be able to save some money. I don't know what the discount code really does, but you should be able to knock off some cost from this product. Uh, they're not paying me, Enhance is not paying me. This is 100% my honest opinion and I I'm beyond excited to show you what it does. So this is the packaging itself. Enhance does a really good job with their packaging. And if you look at it here, this looks very minimalist, Apple type packaging. And this top foam just has the commander here. So don't throw this away. Uh, it has got this commander port, which is what communicates. This is the brain of this entire accessory. And we're gonna plug this into the rear OBD. I'll show you how to do that here in just a second. And this one here is this nub itself. Uh, it matches with the color that you have on the center console on the refreshed generation. So 2021 plus model three, and then all model Y should have this console. And you got this USB-C input. Uh, this is what you got the buttons, these are clickable buttons, and we'll go through all of this setting here in just a second. And then this is just a dial with the screen in the very middle. So here in the packaging, there are two types of plugs. And if you're wondering, well, I thought the older generation console, like the Intel ones from back in the days weren't applicable. Um, so that's correct. Uh, this does not work for those older, like my Model 3 is a 2018 Model 3, does not work for that. But they send you these two different plugs. This one is for those of you who have a rear OBD blue plug. So the one in the rear, uh, you can plug this in. This is a 26 pin connector um, and this connects to the back. Now those of you like Austin built Model Y or some Shanghai built Model Y don't have that blue plug in the, uh, the back and, and has thought about this. So here is the plug for that uh, where this plugs into the blue OBD plug in the A pillar on the side, and this is for your 12 volt bypass. And I'll show you how to do that here in just a second for those cars that don't have the rear OBD plug, but you can connect it to the front. That's also a very, very simple process. They send you a pride tool, and of course they send you the USB-C input here. I know they send you two of these sticker packages. Uh, the first one here is the one that goes in the back. So if you just want to hide the back of this or make it non-scratch, I don't know how you would scratch it, but this does that job. You can just peel that and put it in. This is totally optional. And then they also send you some of these spacers. And these are because Tesla is known for some of the panel gaps and things inside the, the central console area. So you can put this to adjust that panel gap. So if it is wobbly a little bit, you can put some of the spacers on the edges here. So for most cars uh, with the rear OBD port here, the installation is super simple. We're just gonna be removing this panel bypassing this uh, connector, the Y connector, and plugging it into the Bluetooth unit. And for those cars that don't have this blue plug, I'll show you next how to connect that in the front. But basically what you do is take the pry tool that they sent with the kit and then pry open this area in the back. And it's a super simple uh, panel, as you see, just comes right out and you just remove this here and you expose this blue plug. Now, after you have exposed that blue OBD port, the next step is to really just make a Y connector out of this whole connection here in the back. And to do that, all you have to do is pinch this middle tab here and while holding it down, pull the connector out. And then now we're going to take the female connector of the new harness that looks like this and plug it into the male connector of the Tesla harness and it'll click into its place. Now take the male end of this wire harness, the new wire harness, and then connect it back to the Tesla's OBD port here. You just have to line this up and it clicks into its place. And that's it, you made that entire Y connector here and there is nothing else to do other than taking this commander piece, which is this Bluetooth, as I said, this is the brain of the unit and simply plugging it in here. So just align the two little notches that are at the end, plug this in, 
and you're good to go. Now, if you don't have that blue OBD plug in the back central console, they also send you this wiring harness that works for the front console. And again, this is only if you don't have that back console. Most cars already have it. So if you open that back and you don't see one, then you're going to use this method. Now for that connection, you're gonna wanna remove this panel by using a pry tool. When you remove this, you're going to expose a plastic fastener right about here where you're gonna remove that as well. And when you remove that, you can remove this entire bottom footwell panel altogether. When you expose the wiring, you're gonna see a blue OBD plug there. You're gonna take this male end of the new plug and plug it into that blue OBD port. Then right next to it, you're gonna see the power uh, panel, uh, which you're going to remove the power plug by using the same method, pinching in the middle, removing it, and then you're going to bypass that power uh, connection using the connection that is provided with the new wiring harness. And then at the end, you're going to plug in the commander piece here. So that is the front connection. We are here in the front. The final step is to actually install the knob and they make it very easy. They give you a little car graphics with an arrow. And all you have to do is if you look at this USB-C, angled USB-C port, you just plug it into this port where you have this car sign. Uh, this one, you can still use it as a regular standard USB-C, so you didn't lose any USB-C ports. They even thought about that. And when you put it as an angle, you take the other end of this and simply plug it into the left USB-C port and just wait for this to boot up. And there you go. We got power and it says sexy nub and we're done. And they even thought about this wire management so well that they made this all angled USB-C so it is not clunky. You still got space. And the final thing there is left to do is simply slide this in. Uh, different, uh, as I say, fit and finish of the Teslas have changed over time. Uh, you can kind of lift this up and then slide this in, or you can make this angled uh, this way and just fit it in through this angled person as well. So there's multiple options that you have on fitting this in. Uh, you can just slide it in and it also works. So whatever fit and finish you got, if your panel is loose or not, this is pretty stuck here for me. So I actually really like how well it fits and this is already hitting the right seat because I press on this button. Um, and yeah, let's, let's just start playing with this. This is awesome. Now this is where, if this is loose for you, it is not going in well, then that's where you can put these spacers to make it tight. But for me, I don't need anything. And keep in mind that I have got this carbon fiber cover around. If I didn't have this, the inside portion that kind of looks like this exposed area, I don't think you can see it very well here, it would match this color. So they even match the color. So this is what the finished product looks like. And before I show you how you can program this all day long, I wanna give you a general gist of how you can control your Tesla using this button. So there are four different buttons, two on the left and two on the right, and you have got this central knob with the information. And each of these quadrants represent the buttons. So here, if you look at it, this is the rear fan control, and you have that button corresponding to that quadrant, fan speed, the driver uh, seat heating, the right passenger seat heating. So you can see all of that information. And in the very middle, you see the temperature there. And you have multiple ways to control this, but basically you get three different cluster of menus. So this is cluster number one. If you dial this, you get cluster number two and cluster number three. Again, you can program this to various options, but you get three different clusters at a time. You can set this to only have one cluster. It's all your preference, and they make it extremely customizable for that reason. So if we dial back to the main screen here that we saw earlier, it says 70, so that is the fifth uh, button basically. So there are four buttons and they thought this through really well that it says 70 here in the middle and if you press this down you actually activate that menu. So if you go down that is when you saw the 70 that enlarged and you can control the Kevin temperature using this dial by going through here. So and if you want to go back to the main menu just leave it here for a couple of seconds and it goes back or if you are in this menu and you want to go back quickly you can press down again and you go back to the menu icon. There's a haptic feedback, you can hear it. I have set this to loud, but you can also set this to mild or no haptic feedback at all. And you can do that in the app. I'll show you how to do that here in just a second. But let's just kind of quickly go through some of these menu icons that are by default. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to download the app. 
as soon as you plug this in, these are the menu items that you get. So total of three different ones, and if you count, there's four, and there's one in the middle, that makes it five. So 15 different settings, different settings, 15 different settings controlled by default at a time, and you can customize it. Now let's go through some of these menu icons. So for example, if I was to press right here on this button, this climate control fan speed menu appears, and I can change the fan speed, and you can probably hear it through the mic that the fan speed has been set to max or auto. And I can lower the fan speed and I can go to one. And if you just leave this out for a couple of seconds, it goes back to the menu item. You can also adjust that timing from the app. Now, another example here, if I press on this because it corresponds to the seat heating, the seat heating icon pops up and I can rotate the dial so one, that is the level one, so it's just the one seat heater on, on the left, uh, so which is the left passenger, which is the driver for me in this case, and two and three, and I already feel the seat heating up, which is amazing, and you see dynamically it adjusts the color here. So if I go here, it shows that the seat heater is on, and the brightness of this ring actually adjusts based on how much seat heating is on, and turn off means is completely off. Give it a couple of seconds and it goes back to this menu icon, which is really amazing that it is so sensitive and it is very dynamic. Same with both of this icon. Now to adjust, just quickly adjust some of this. If you look at it, it says 70 in the middle, that's the temperature. That is the main temperature setting and you can also push this dial down and Kevin temperature can be changed and if we were to adjust this, if you look at it after like 76, the, the 80, the, the light changes and this is the high temperature. And if I just dial this down, I get a haptic feedback. You can change the intensity of the haptic feedback and the sound to whatever you want. Uh, you can also turn it off. So that's menu number one. Now moving on to the next menu items. By default, you get this four. This is regen braking, this is acceleration, club box, and autopilot, toggling autopilot on and off. And the very, very middle is to precondition your battery. And for the regen, let's just say we press here, you see I have got 100% regen. And it's amazing that the light feedback is awesome that when I go here, I can change this, right? 75%, 50, 25, or completely turn this up. So if you're sensitive to regen braking, you can now adjust this to whatever region you want. I'm gonna leave mine to 100 and give it a couple of seconds. It goes back to the menu item and locks in that setting. If I go here, this is the chill versus uh, sports acceleration. And as I said, just give it a couple of seconds. It goes back, this is your glove box menu. So I press on here and this is of course the autopilot. Autopilot is not engaged right now because we are stationary, but once we have the autopilot available, we can press here to engage autopilot. And then this very middle is your preconditioning. So if we were to just press down here, we can actually precondition the battery. Let's say you're going to a non-Tesla supercharger uh, and you wanna condition the battery before you arrive there, you are now manually able to do that. So that's pretty awesome. It includes all of these features. Let's move on to the next one. This is another control one. Uh, here you got the wiper control. They are set to auto. I can change this to four and I'll, you can see in reflection that the wipers have turned on and we'll just leave this to auto, which is off right now. This one is your dome light. So dome light on or dome light off. And this one is your volume control for the entire car. So you can change the volume to be max, min, and you can go through this. And this is actually reflected on the main screen as well. And this last one here, if we just give it a couple of seconds, it actually shows you what it is. It is the folding mirror. So unfold it, and if I press here, the mirror is folded, and I see that happening as well, and unfold it. Now there's one more thing that was really fascinating here. Right here in the middle, you see that it's P, that means the gear selector. And if you press down, the gear selection becomes active and reverse. We're going in reverse. Tesla is actually responding to this. And if I press down, this is park, 
this is drive so this is a game changer feature especially for those of you who don't want to use the stock up top or people who are forced to use the touch screen for the gear selection like some of the model s and x as well as the highland um, and hope this becomes available for cybertruck in the future but this is really cool that you now have the actual dial option to change your gear selection rather than going to the screen. So if you want an actual dial, physical medium to control the gear, here you got it. You can shift the gear using this knob here. Now what makes this product so powerful is the ability to customize different functions directly from an app. You just have to download a Sexy Buttons app from the App Store or the Google Play Store. And when you first go through the app, it is gonna ask you all these privacy settings, the notification, location. Once you go through all of that initial setup, then you just need to make sure that your Bluetooth is turned on. You don't have to connect to anything, the Bluetooth is turned on. And when you go through the settings here in the nub, if you have never connected it, you're gonna hit start connection and it is going to take you through the process where it will automatically connect it through Bluetooth. Again, don't have to go through the settings of the Bluetooth. Uh, the app will do everything for you. And then what I would recommend is when you first go through the commander or the nub is to press on the little gear icon, the settings icon and go through the firmware update. That is another thing that sets apart this accessory from the rest is this is not an OTA gimmick. They actually send you firmware updates and they have done that many times over the last year for the sexy buttons itself. So I can safely say that they are focused on the continued product development. When you first go through this menu icon, you're gonna see three different cluster uh, menus. And those are the options that you see here on the dial as well. So you go through the dial, you see one, two, and three. So there are three different menu items and you can adjust what each of those buttons do for those menu items. You can do that directly through the app and you will also see what each of these are using the app here. And in the bottom, um, you can set one to three. So it offers up to three different menu icons. As I said, you can do only two. And if you just do that, it will delete one of those menu icons. So it gives you a warning. It won't automatically do that. You can also set the brightness of this. So if this is too bright for you, you can go over here on custom and you can adjust it. And you will actually see that happening live on the dial itself which is really cool that they even thought about that. Uh, turn off the display and ambient light after you can just leave it at auto. So when the car turns off, or you can do 10 second, 30 second, you can put the timing. You can also do the haptic feedback. So if you go to the haptic feedback, right now it is set to normal and you will hear the haptic feedback really loud that you have made those, uh, the, the turning of the knob, you can do gentle, you can turn it off. You can also do the ambient light setting. You can set this to just be blue or you can do dynamic colors so that it adjusts accordingly whenever you are on the road. And if you want like the red to be the high speed, you can adjust that all they want. And so there's a lot of settings just straight from the app, just from the main menus. Let's dive into some of these settings a little bit further inside all you have to do is press in the icon the menu icon and it will take you through each of this here so you can you can change the fan speed and if you press here it says the climate control fan speed rear fan you can set it to whatever you want you can do wiper media drive open the glove box the trunk you can press here you can save this icon to be anything that you want so right now if it says the rear climate control turn on and off is here. Now, if I go here and I say, you know what? I actually want that to control the wipers. So I can just do that and then save the action and that changed to wipers here. So that is how quickly it changes. So now if I go back and then say, actually, you know what? I want the climate control and I want the rear fan. And if I save the action, that rear fan, that updated right away. So it is instant, it updates everything instantly, and that is how you program it. It's super easy, you just press on any of this icon, click here, and you can go through all of these menu icons, mirrors, others, you can say thank you by flashing the light, interior light, all of this 
is set up and they say that they are looking into adding more features, continuously improving this through software updates over time. And you can do this for each of these menu icons and they have different preset functions that you can choose from. You can do the regen, you can do the continuous autopilot. So aside from all of those features, this also has a couple of hidden features such as the door handles. So if you long pull or half press on the door handle for the front or the front right or the front left, it can open your front. Um, it also has the charge port unlock where if you press on the rear door handle or pull on the rear door handle for a little while, it will unlock the charge port. It also has the kick down, which is to increase the power if you just press and hold on your accelerator. Auto off, this is a game changer feature where if you have a ma force manual high beam or turn off the wipers, this is where it's an annoying feature that Tesla has when you turn on the autopilot, it does not let you turn off the wipers. It automatically set it to auto and if you wanna turn off the wipers, you gotta get out of autopilot and now this fixes that. So you got a auto off here. Now next is the continuous autopilot. This is a feature for those of you who have just a basic autopilot on your Tesla. And if you need to change lane, um, every time you change the lane, it doesn't do the auto lane change for you. So you put your blinker, you get out of autopilot, go back into the next lane and then toggle the autopilot again. This fixes that issue where, of course you can't make Tesla do the automatic lane change. What we can do is, once you go to the next lane, after you disengage the autopilot by just giving your signal, forcing the autopilot out and going to the next lane, after preset seconds, like here, after three seconds of the blinker stopping, the car will automatically turn on the autopilot again using this device, which is really awesome. You can set the minimum speed, whatever you want, and then it will do that for you. Uh, this is limited. Uh, this is probably in a beta mode, so just be cautious that it may not work all the time, but that feature exists, which is really nice. There is also the lights, uh, automatically turn on your rear daytime running lights when your front lights are on, presenting doors uh, to pop up the driver or passenger doors, and this is not active yet. Uh, and if I wanted to activate, this feature does not exist on Model Y today because they are talking about that self-presenting door on Model X, and if I check if your car is supported, it says it is not supported yet uh, because this only works on Model X today. Scan my Tesla, now you can integrate other third-party apps without needing to daisy chain multiple plugs in that rear OBD. You can just use the this one and, and connect with other third-party apps such as the Scan My Tesla, Tesla X, or CanDAS uh, directly using this uh, command here, the commander here, and then secure your Tesla, safe Bluetooth connect. So you got all of those extra features here as well. This is a list of currently supported features broken down by each Tesla model. So. S3, X, Y, and they even have a list of which year, what model. They even have a comment and notes on each of those, which model is supported for which function. So they've got a pretty comprehensive list of features and functions available for this product, and they keep updating those because that list was pretty small last year, and now they have enhanced and, it. And one of the lesser known features about this knob is that they even thought about this. You press on this full screen icon and you got yourself a portable instrument cluster display. I'm pressing on the brake and it has that red there. I am activating the turn signal and it has got that. It has got the setup here. It shows I have 7.75% battery degradation. It shows the, the ideal capacity. And if you press here and go to settings, you can toggle this to show different things. So I can toggle this off. I can toggle all of this like a frank mode, which means all the stats are gonna be gone. And if I put my car into drive, it automatically updates that. So. This actually does a lot and it says it's beta, but it shows the light and all you have to do is go back and you go back to this home screen. So it even acts as instrument cluster for you. Now we're going to try the autopilot activation using this um, and it's super easy. As long as the autopilot is available, all I have to do is press on this button and then activate the autopilot and it activated right here. My eyes needs to be on the road because the camera is tracking it after the recall, but Basically, the autopilot is now in full swing just with the bond, but it does not 
It does not get away with the fact that you still have to put your hand on the steering wheel. Um, it will not be an anti-nag device. But what you can do with this is that you can control the maximum speed, the autopilot speed, just using the knob. And I can go all the way to 40. Uh, all I have to do is turn this knob and adjust it, like 40, 35. Um, and if I do that, it, again, if I were to just be totally hands-free, it's gonna start nagging me, uh, even if I turn on this uh, to adjust the speed. Because if I were to do this, it takes away the nag, but if I were to use the speed changing here, it does not take away the nag. Okay, another thing that I wanna test are the automatic wipers. So let's turn on the autopilot. So the autopilot is toggled to on, just using the buttons. I didn't touch the stock. Now let's go check the wipers. Wow, look at that, the wipers are off. Uh, otherwise it would be in auto and then it would just automatically turn on the wipers, but now it is manual. Now you can turn on the wipers just manually um, using either here or you can press on the button here to activate the wipers, but now it is no longer set to auto. It is in manual mode as turning off here, not auto, which is great. Tesla wouldn't let you get out of that with the, without this device. It would always set to auto, but now you can set this to whatever you want. Now, another thing I wanted to test is the regenerative braking to see how well it works. So if I'm here, this is 100% regen, so if I accelerate, helps me come to a complete stop right away, even from an install acceleration like this. Now let's change that a little bit and let's go to the region setting and let's drop to the extreme. So let's do 25 and see how well that works. Yeah, it's not, <laughs> as you see, the car is still rolling. It's not helping me come to a complete stop. The car keeps going. So. That region setting actually works. Now let's go to 75, see if I will feel it. Yeah, it is not instant like 100, but 75 is better. Now let's go back to 50. Yeah, it's better than 75, but not as quite as 25. So yeah, this whole region thing actually works. Now let me see if I turn it off what happens. So region to off. Accelerate, well, this is a uphill a little bit, so car is rolling. Still with uphill, the car is rolling. So let me see, if I turn here. Keep in mind the region is set to 0% right now, so no region at all. Accelerate, the car stays in that same rate. That is not, uh, this feels weird for a Tesla, but looks like you can completely turn off the region. So those of you who do not like the region, you have a solution now. You accelerate, we set it up to 0%, we accelerate, and the car keeps going. It's not stopping. <laughs> ah, that, that feels weird to me, but if you have never had regen and you like this, where the cars keep rolling, then you have a solution now. Uh, let me go back to 100. I do not like this at all. So going back to 100, yeah, there you go coming to a stop a lot quicker. Instant acceleration. There you go. That is what I'm used to with Tesla. Instant acceleration, braking. Now let's test the battery preconditioning. This is a really great feature, especially if you're charging at a non-Tesla supercharger and you wanna precondition the battery to a certain temperature, uh, or if you're even going to a supercharger. Like for me, I have a supercharger five minutes away and I go there all the time uh, because I've got a, a lot of free supercharging thanks to all of your referrals and I wanna utilize that, take advantage of that. So rather than charging at home, I just go to the supercharger. But one of the issues that I have during the winter time is uh, if I navigate to the supercharger, it will start preconditioning and it's just five minutes away. So it hasn't preconditioned enough and I don't have a way to precondition manually. So now this is going to be really helpful for me. Uh, so I have set one of the mic transmitters or sight. So you should be able to hear that audio concurrently. I have one inside. Let's manually precondition this battery. And if I go here and press precondition, it says not available, but then, yeah, it jumped back to preconditioning. So we should be able to 
hear the preconditioning of the battery. The battery should make some noise. Yeah, I'm starting to hear that. And they say that we can actually monitor this on the app of the temperature of the battery. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go to the app and then see what the temperature of the battery is. Now here, back to the app, uh, I have set the battery temperature on the screen and it's 63.1 degree Fahrenheit right now. And to do that, you can also go just add here stats and they got a bunch of different items that you can add to the dashboard, including the temperature and battery temperature right now is 63.1 and the battery inlet is 86.7 and 87. So it keep going up. So you know that this is heating up and it's working. So 63.1, that's where we started with. And then I'll come back and show you what that battery temperature looks like in a little bit, but it's preconditioning right now. It has been one minute and we are already at 64.8 degree Fahrenheit on the battery temperature. So the preconditioning is working. Main display right here. This is the setting where you can see the, the wiper is in auto and then your, your fan is in auto here, but you can also see the KW that you're pushing, your speed, your region braking, your battery capacity. Of course, right now my, um, my app is disconnected here in the demo, but you could see it like the nominal new, nominal full, the energy buffer, degradation. You could see a lot of that information right there, which is really nice because this is connected directly to the Tesla's computer. So you're getting the right stuff by just using this app right here. You can also toggle a lot of this information. So there's the Frank mode, which is, it will show the, the turn signal indicator in a very big, large area. So you know that you're, you're making that turn um, again, lots and lots of information. I want to clarify a couple of questions about this knob that I had before getting it. Uh, one thing that I was wondering was if I make any changes to the knob here, the settings, will it also get reflected on the Tesla screen? The answer is yes and no. Uh, like in the past, some of the settings that you change here will get reflected onto the main screen. For example, if we were to change the volume control, so let's go to the volume control, which is here. And if I was to turn toggle this knob, you'll see the volume control being reflected here in the screen. So that one worked. Uh, same with if we wanted to fold the mirror. So if I press here uh, to the mirror and then fold it, you'll see that reflected on the screen. So a couple of this, you can see it, but let's say on the climate menu in the screen. So let's go back to the climate control here. Now let's say if I wanted to toggle this uh, seat heating to one, so now the seat heating is toggled to one and we see that if we go back to the menu that the, the seat heating is toggled to one here. But if we go to Tesla, you see that is gray. The seat heating is not toggled on the Tesla and it shows that it's not toggled, but here it shows one and I feel the heating coming up. Versus if we were to toggle this to three, this actually updated to three. So it is almost like a one way where whatever you see in the Tesla will be reflected on the knob, but whatever you do on the knob may not get reflected on the Tesla screen. That does not mean it is not doing its job. It just means that Tesla is not showing that information in the main screen, but the knob is doing its job. All right, I'm not trying to overhype this product, but I can't help it. This is just an amazing product. I had so much fun installing this, playing with all of those functions and features and seeing the app and toggling through. I mean, I was getting overwhelmed with how much you can customize and how much information you can see about your car using the app. And even if you don't want to deal with any of the app stuff, you are preloaded with 15 different quick control options directly here with this knob. And if you want to download those options on your app, over 100 different options that you can choose from that you can set with this knob. And what is more is that you even get a bonus instrument cluster display, a portable one that does not require any wiring at all. This whole thing installs in under 15 minutes and it does more and it shows more information than any of the product that we have installed on our car in the past. So that is why, let's say if somebody were to come to me and say, Shiva, you have reviewed hundreds of products. If there was one product that you could choose from that I wanna keep that's just one single product, I'd probably pick this one because of all the reasons I just talked about. 
What is there not to like about this? It's a minimalist design. They are following the same Tesla protocol of having an amazing product that they can stand behind and they can keep pushing software update to make it better. Now, one thing to keep in mind is it's probably gonna take you a little while to get used to with this buttons while you are driving. It's stationary, no problem. You can see it, you can control it. But while driving, if you're trying to activate the autopilot, you probably have to look down slightly to see what menu item you're in. So it takes getting used to. I was driving around for a while. In the beginning, I had a little bit of a hard time remembering, okay, so I'm in that menu icon now. I need to turn it. But once you know how to use this product, it's gonna be super helpful, super easy. But just wanted to put that disclaimer out there. It's probably going to take, it's gonna be a little bit of a learning curve for you. Now on to a couple of feedback for Enhance, uh, and they are all software upgrade fixable. So first of all is the seat control module. I don't see anything on the app or anywhere where you can recline the front passenger seat or adjust the length of that front passenger seat going back and forth. Uh, we have seen that with rear screens, we have seen that with other buttons, and that is not included with this version of the app that I am in. So hopefully they incorporated that in the future. That would be really nice. Another thing is uh, unlatching the passenger door. So the front uh, right, uh, as well as all the passenger doors. Maybe I missed it somewhere uh, because there are so many buttons and everything there that maybe I, I missed that, but I didn't see that either. So those would be two feature requests for me for Enhance. As always, I'm really interested on in knowing your feedback, your likes, your dislike, your feature requests for Enhance. And it would be great if you list those in the comment section below because Enhance as well as T-Sport Line is watching this video and going through the comment section so they can incorporate all of these feature requests in the future iterations. And that's what this channel is all about. We send in those feature requests and the manufacturers make the product better based on your request. So please continue to do that. If you found today's video helpful, please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, engage with our videos, like, share, subscribe, anything you can do because it greatly helps. And please come back again for another Tesla accessory review next week.